earlier, we made a plot using SwiftViz2. It was just a scatter plot showing you basically the how you can do it. The code looked like this. Yes, I did restart my Eclipse so that I don't have those phantom errors in here. Uh, but I create a scatter plot. And in fact, there's a part of me that feels like I made all of these things. No, it's not quite happy with all of those. Um, this pops up a scatter plot for us and that in a 500 by 500 window and all the dots were black by default. Uh, one of the things that I can nicely do inside of SwiftViz is vary the size of dots. Now you can do that with Scala FX as well if you use a bubble chart instead of a scatter chart. Um, so for example, I wanted slightly smaller uh, dots. I could say five pixels, but this can also be a, uh, a collection and so I could, for example, scale these. I could make it so that there were big dots for, for rainy days and small dots for, for not rainy days. But instead of varying the size, I want to vary the color. And this is one that I have not seen how to do in, uh, in Scala FX uh, using their charting techniques. We can pass in here another argument that gives us back a color for each index. Uh, so it's, it basically matches this is the X, this is the Y. This is going to be the a sequence of colors that we're supposed to use. Now to help do that, the colors are passed in as this is going to be a, a sequence of integers uh, with ARGB values. And since it can be challenging to go from a particular value to an ARGB, there are some aspects of this that help. In particular, I've made a color gradient type that you pass it in uh, a however many tuples you want. So for example, I want to say that no rain is going to be colored black. Now I have a constant someplace for, for black, but I'm just going to put in the ARGB value. So note that I'm doing these inside of hex. This is an alpha. I'm making it FF so that it is actually fully on. I'll do an import there so that's happy. The next two would be red, green, and blue. Going from zero to one inches of rain, I want it to transition from black to green. And then going from one to say 10 inches of rain, I want it to go from green to Let's go with blue. Okay, so this defines a color gradient that basically is a function that takes a double, it takes a double, any double you want, and it gives you back an integer color. If the value is less than zero, it would give us black. If it's greater than 10, it would give us solid blue. And in between these values, it does a smooth uh, gradient between them. I also need the data that we're going to, to do this gradient on. Now I could just in here pull it in, but we need to remember something. We stored negative values for days that didn't have rain. It turns out for this plot, I now want to throw out all the days that don't have a rain value, or I could treat them as a zero, perhaps. Uh, you can decide which one you do. I'm actually going to throw them out. So I am going to make a rain data and that rain data is going to be, I'm gonna do two things. First, I'm gonna take the data and I'm gonna filter it so that I only keep things where the precipitation is, I left out a dot there, is greater than or equal to zero. So our negative values are now gone. And this is only the data points that actually have rain. In addition to that, I want to sort them by the precipitation. And the reason for this is because the dots are drawn on the plot from first element through to the end. So this will make the color stand out a bit more because the rainy days will be drawn on top and the non-rainy days will be in the back. So you'll get a lot of black dots across the back and then towards the front you'll get more color, which will help that to stand out. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take, instead of just making this as data, this is going to be rain data. And this is going to be rain data. And then I also want to come down here 
and use the rain data again and we're going to map on it and for each day what do I want to do well it turns out this color gradient is a function that we can use so I want to oops, CG I want to have that function operate on our precipitation okay and so based upon what the precipitation is this color gradient will will produce a value between you know the black and the green for 0 to 1 and the green and the blue for 1 to 10 and it should make it show up in our plot that way and my window has popped up so it read in the data and now it's drawing there we go and so you can see the coloration in here every dot is a different color I don't see much that goes into the blue uh, there are definitely some solid greens in here. By making the blue 10, we probably didn't get very close to that. Um, but you can definitely see there's some interesting color. Actually, this plot fascinates me uh, because I've done this plot for a different part of the country, and it looks very different uh, between the two. In Detroit Lakes, rainy days are just average temperature. They, they might be a little bit below the average. They hug the bottom of this a little bit more. Uh, in other parts of the country, the rainy days are definitely more on, on the bottom of this because the rain itself is, is lowering the temperature. Anyway, that gives you a brief introduction to how you can do things like coloring your dots in SwiftViz2. Um, and from here, we're going to start talking about parallelism and then talk about Spark.